Many people think that learning Rate API is impossible, and so did I, but I stuck with it for long enough and now get to teach others how to avoid mistakes that I made in the beginning. When it comes to learning Rate API, I like to break it down into these 5 stages. And by going from stage to stage, you'll know more about Rate API until you become an expert. While we go through these stages, comment down below in which of these stages are you currently at, so I can help you go to the next stage quicker. Let's start with the first one, Hello World stage. This is for people who want to start with Rate API but don't know anything about programming. Hello World is an iconic statement every programmer makes when they start learning to code. The goal is to make computer display Hello World text on the screen. As simple as it sounds, it's considered a computer program. If you are in this stage, you need to focus on programming basics. I would recommend you to learn Python as it's very popular and one of the easiest languages to learn. And you can also check my video with an overview of Python basics for Revit users. But you would still need to make some courses to really get used to it. And always remember that there are so many free courses on Python, so if you don't like the one that you started, you can always switch to another one until you find something that you truly enjoy. I would recommend you starting with CS50 Introduction to Programming with Python by Harvard or Introduction to Computer Science and Programming using Python by MIT. These are two great courses to get started. And while you learn, try to practice as much as possible. The more error messages you're gonna see, the more you will learn from them and quicker you understand programming basics. There are also many websites where you can learn Python as a game, where you need to solve problems using code and compare your results to others. This will really help you improve your coding skills. Sometimes I saw that my 50 lines of code could have easily been just 5 lines, so you learn really quick on those mistakes. And lastly, nowadays we also can get free one-on-one -on -one tutoring with ChatGPT. Don't just ask it to solve you a problem, but instead ask it to guide you. Why does it happen like this and why do we need certain concepts in programming? And it has really good understanding of Python to help you learn it too. In this stage, your main goal is to understand syntax, data types and operators, what can we do with these data types, conditional statements, for loops, functions, error handling, and a little bit of object-oriented programming, which is mainly about classes. And remember, you don't need to become a Python expert, you just need to understand how to make logic in your scripts using Python syntax and how to read other people's code. Once you pick up Python basics, you'll be ready to move to the next stage where you will need to sharpen your axe. There is a really good quote, give me 6 hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first 4 sharpening the axe. And it's all about preparation, so we better prepare our development environment for Revit API. And it's not complicated. First of all, we need to install a few Revit plugins. We need Revit Lookup to look inside of our elements. Then Revit Python Shell for testing Python snippets inside of Revit. And lastly, the best plugin, Parravit. It gives you a ton of free tools, provide ability to create extension with just a folder structure, and it also has plenty of pre-written functions to make it easier for beginners to code with Revit API. We'll talk more about this in a moment. Once you have all of these Revit plugins, we need to install an IDE. It's like a text editor on steroids with plenty of features for coding. The two most popular choices are PyCharm and Visual Studio Code. You can choose any of them, but my personal preference is PyCharm. If you need help configuring any of these IDEs, I have videos on my channel, just check the links in the description. Once you have your tools sharpened, you also need to learn more about trees, or in our case, Revit API basics. There is Revit API online documentation, where we can read more about any class, method and how they should be used. You don't need to learn it all, but you should understand how to find and read certain information there. There is also Paravit developer's documentation that shows you how Paravit can be used to save you time and nerves when you code. For example, in effective inputs, you'll find a list of all the code snippets and screenshots that they will create, and many of them just a single line of code. That's one of the powers of Paravit. And now, once you sharpen your axe and you know where to look, you're ready to chop down some trees. This is where it gets more fun as you are moving to the next stage, Older's Shadow. In this stage, you will need to learn from other programmers. There is no need to look further than Pyrevit. Let me explain. First of all, Pyrevit and all of its tools are open source. It means that we can look at every single line of code written. Just hold Alt and click on any of these tools and it will open a folder where the script is located. And you can look inside and learn. Or steal like an artist. Not only that, Pyrevit has also a bunch of additional extensions made by other people, including my own ef Tools extension. Same here. Hold Alt and click on any of these tools and you will see the code. They are all open source, so you get access to hundreds of scripts that already work and you can look inside to understand the code behind them. While you are in this stage, it's very common for people to copy many tools to their own toolbars and make slight modifications, to get a taste of creating your own custom add-ins. Remember, you are in the learning stage, so still like an artist and understand the basics how they work. 
And while you do this, it still might be complicated, but you can always have one-on-one -on -one tutoring with your new friend ChatGPT. It can help you break down the script and explain how it works. It's fairly good on simple scripts or when you provide complete solutions, but it might hallucinate if you ask it to write complicated tools from scratch. Just keep that in mind. In this stage, you should pick up Revit API basics like selection, read element properties, get and set parameters, transactions to modify your projects, how to get the right elements, UI formed with Pyrate, and over time you'll keep adding more and more to this list depending on what kind of automation you want to create in Revit. And by the end of this stage, you can already have a big toolbar of tools from where you can take different snippets and you get some understanding of Revit API. And now you're ready to move to the next stage, where you will be a Revit API rookie coder. After you look at all the other developers' code and even modified some of their scripts, you might have come up with your own ideas you want to write. But in this stage, you should keep your ideas simple and focus on quantity over quality. Your goal here is to learn as much about Revit API as possible, and I think making lots of little tools would be much better than making one huge add-in. There was an interesting study. There was a pottery class where an instructor divided his students into two groups. The first group was given a challenge to make the perfect pot in 30 days. And the second group had to make new pot every single day for 30 days. And guess what? After 30 days, they all submitted their pots for competition to be judged. And all the best pots came from the second group that focused on making lots of pots instead of making one perfect all along. This applies not only to pottery but to anything we start learning. In the beginning, we are not good, and we should focus on quantity to actually get to the quality stage. So I encourage you to make lots of little tools over making one perfect add-in. Remember, it's practice over perfection. And in this stage, we are learning to code with Revit API. And having lots of smaller tools will allow you to experiment, fail and improve far more than making one single complicated tool. That's the quickest way of learning to code, by actually doing it. However, once in a while, you should definitely challenge yourself to see how far can you go, but be realistic. For example, in the beginning of my journey, I decided to make a tool to print PDFs of different sizes. Back then, we didn't have pro sheets and Revit couldn't do this, so I really wanted to make this tool. I didn't know enough about creating custom UIs, and I had no idea what I should use for producing PDFs from Revit. I spent a long time coding it, but I never finished it. And yet, I still learned a lot about creating custom UIs, and a lot of stuff about Revit API. I felt the feed, but I went back to making lots of smaller scripts, and I got my confidence back up. Sometimes you'll start making a tool, but you will fail. But you'll still learn a lot by attempting to do this. And over time, you'll get more comfortable with Revit API and slowly you'll transition into the next stage, Revit API Hero. You don't need to know everything about Revit API in this stage. However, you should know the basics well and you have lots of little scripts behind your back. Now you can start making bigger and more custom tools for yourself. And also you'll notice that when you take a big tool and break it down into smaller steps, you'll remember that some of these steps were already written in one of your smaller tools. So you will often go back and copy-paste certain snippets, and you will start building new tools from previous ones, and it's awesome, as it saves so much time. In this stage, you should focus on how to efficiently reuse your previous code, because good programmers code, but great programmers, they reuse code. And if you don't know how to do this, I will leave a link in the description to a video that will teach you. Nowadays, when I create new tools, oftentimes I can go to my previous tools and copy a lot of stuff for the new one. And sometimes I can even get 50 to 80% of the script by just reusing my previous snippet. So it becomes much easier creating lots of new tools. From here on, you will only keep improving and learning more about Revit API. And slowly, you will go beyond all of these steps and become Revit API expert. And while we might struggle with imposter syndrome, remember, expert is just someone who is a few steps ahead of other people. While you might not be in 1% of experts, you still be an expert to someone who is behind you in learning Revit API. And once you become a Revit API expert, you'll have plenty of opportunities in your career. Many people will want you to create tools for their company, you'll be able to teach others how to do the same, you'll be active in PyRevit or Revit API communities, and even be able to contribute to PyRevit to help it grow and have even more cool tools. So this is a journey that I would recommend you if you want to learn Revit API. Start by learning Python and prepare your development environment, look and copy what other developers have written in PyRevit, and start making lots of little tools to focus on one thing at a time. Slowly increase complexity and start thinking about becoming more efficient programmer by reusing your code. And gradually you will become a Revit API expert. Remember, it's a journey of continuous learning and improvement. But if you want to save lots of time learning Revit API, be sure to check out my Revit API course. I have the first module uploaded here on YouTube so you can get a taste and prepare your development environment. The next course launch is estimated somewhere around February, I will send more information in my newsletter. Thank you for watching and as always, happy coding!